the first thing I've got to do is find out where it creaks. Now, it's a pretty common thing, creaking staircases, and normally I would say that they're creaking because they've dried out. This house is just over 20 years old and things have dried out. They've got central heating. So best will in the world, when you build a staircase, it's fine. And then slowly but surely, it shrinks. The best way to solve it is from the underside. If you can get access to the underside of a staircase, you can re-glue those blocks, you can put in wedges, you can just tighten the whole thing up. But in this case, there is no chance of us getting access to the underside unless we take down all the plasterboard and the household is not up for that. So we're gonna try and tackle it from the top. And then I'm gonna take the carpet up. Luckily, this one's on gripper rods. Most of them are in the UK, but in some places you get carpets stuck down and that is a nightmare. I would suggest if you've got a carpet that's been glued down, leave it there and think of something else. Now, I'm just going to mention at this point that uh, gripper rods are another one of my many pet hates. Whenever there are gripper rods, there will be blood. <laughs> now, if you've got a situation like this where the carpet's in two pieces on the stairs, it's important to remember which one was the top one and which one is the lower one. So we can see clearly what's happened here. As I said, over the years, it's shrunk away. But also, here's the tread, which is made of timber and this is made of mdf they are tacked along the back of the tread the front of a tread is supported by the riser but the back of the tread it would float there's nothing supporting it so it's essential that that back is pushed hard against there if we had access to the back we would simply go around the back hammer that back on with a bit of glue but we can't do that what we're going to do is we're going to tack it from the front still put the glue in in this case the gap is big i was going to use d4 glue which we just pour down most of it just run down through the hole so we'll use the gorilla expanding polyurethane glue in the joint and then tighten it up now not every one of these treads is creaking but i've looked up there and they're all starting to part company from the back there so it would be foolish to just do the ones that creak i'm going to go and do the whole lot and that way we're not going to get a call back in six months or a year's time to say that staircase you fixed is creaking again. It's not that critical where these gripper rods go, but the reason I mark them before I take them up is because that carpet has sat down there for a good many years now, and it's kind of shaped itself into the stair. So if we move the gripper rod back or forward, we may interfere with that kind of shape. So it's easy enough just to run a pen down them, and then we've got the line. Now, as a plumber, I've taken a lot of gripper rod up in the past to get access to pipes. And what I do find is if you're too greedy with it, if you're in too much of a rush, you snap the gripper rod, which is not the end of the world, but it's nice to get it up in one piece. So that's why I go along under each nail first before I start pulling. Because these nails are short, but they are ring shank nails. They bite into the wood. So we're going to put the expanding polyurethane glue along the back here to fill the gap, but we need to pull that together because we don't want to rely on the glue alone. So I have to close it up by putting a screw in here. I could just go, all right, well, that's roughly where it goes, but it could end up missing this. It could end up going through the plasterboard on the other side. The way we get accuracy, take a pocket hole jig. Now this one is from Craig. It goes in there and it allows us to drill at an angle down through the tread, precise angle. That should then come out into the riser at the back and it should importantly come in out midway because we don't want this screw coming out the bottom where it's going to split the back of the riser this being mdf it's not such a problem but we also don't want it coming in too high so that it's sticking out here there's a scale and there's a mark there i've worked out that this is 25 millimeters thick if it's three quarters of an inch we're going to go down to here you can see where it starts going in that's the entry point where it starts you can see that it's coming down and finishing in the middle of the tread the important thing is that we don't come out in the plasterboard behind now i think we probably get away with putting one in the middle i don't think it needs three in there but let's put three in there 
because we've got it, we've got set up. I've been playing around with this on a piece of scrap wood and I'm really glad I did because I've been able to adjust this collar here, which you do with the Allen key, up or down. So I've got the depth right now. So that's the amount we've got going through into the backing board. Obviously that's at a diagonal. There's the grab, which I think is fine. So that backing board is just about 10 mil. So that screw going through by that amount is perfect. Don't try using this free hand. If you start drilling and you're trying to hold that free hand, there's a tendency for the drill to spin around and move it. So what they provide here is some holes for you to just secure it. So to say that this has been a bit of a learning curve is an understatement because I've almost tried a different technique on every step. The fact that this is MDF is making life virtually impossible. We put the screw in, it bites the MDF, it pulls it in, and then it lets go. So having tried thin screws, fat screws, you name it, we've given it a go. What I've come up with is these stainless steel screws made for decking. The fact that there's no pilot hole going into the MDF, it's just using this to self-tap is actually a help because when we had a pilot hole going in there, the thread wasn't enough to grab it. And at that point, it's pulled it in slightly, but then it spins. And I can't really see any way around that at all. I can't imagine how we're able to hook behind it. If you get it to the other side, absolutely fine. If it was just plywood, I reckon it would pull in. But MDF is just not great. Spray it up first. Helps it go off faster. I'm just squirt that in there. It's thin enough that it will run down and hopefully not all of it will run down. Oh, that's going in. These stairs won't creak. It's pinned in three places. It's got a polyurethane glue along the back. And if you just did nothing but put the glue in, and not only polyurethane glue, but the five minute glue is great that you put in with the tube. Whatever you can do, it's going to help. The staircase has actually moved away from the landing slightly. We're not going to do much about that and we're definitely not going to put any expanding wood glue in to fill that gap. And anyway, there's no creaking happening there because the surfaces are so far apart that they're not rubbing together. I've put a lot of carpet back down in my career, but I haven't done stair carpets because there's no pipes in stair carpets. What I've discovered is it's better to work from the bottom up rather than the other way down because the other way down you're standing on the carpet that you're trying to fit. But there you go, I'll be better the next time.